Hi, everyone. Uh, here we are again. Karen Bins, <laughs> back on Shell Studio. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm a stylist, a creative director. Uh, I'm, as well as that, I'm also uh, a BFC judge for quite a few things, including working with Sarah Moa with the new gen designers. I also have someone here with me. Hello. I'm Nasir Mazar. I'm a designer, a maker, uh, tutor at Central Minds on the MA Menswear course, and director of Fantastic Toiles. We are here today to talk about uh, the real situation that we're going through in the UK, especially in London, uh, discussing what Fashion Week means, how the fashion industry is today in our eyes, and what's the possibilities of real success coming from a designer coming out of college in London. I mean, there's so many great colleges here, and they're not all just in London as well. No. But, you know, I think it's important to see the reality of what happens when someone comes to the UK, goes to a fashion college, what they end up achieving in that college and their future as far as having a, a reputable business or having a very strong career. Um, let's see, I know that you, I mean, this is something that I've never been able to really do, but I've never really been involved in the education side of fashion in London and in the UK, I like to say the UK. And I think that things usually should start from when someone enrolls into a fashion college, you know, why they are going to that college, how do they see themselves as having a, a you know, a coherent career in fashion? Hmm. What do you mean it starts? With? Yeah, like I feel that, you know, lately there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of young people that have gone to the wayside. They've come here, they've taken their years in college, you know, they've gone through their MAs, and I just don't really see a strong sense of real designers coming out mm. and making it, like really making it. Like, mm. you know, you have someone like Kim Jones. He, he went to college, he did the work, he did the studying, he worked under quite a few people. And this to me is like a real example of success. Mm. And and it's also a great representation of the talent that comes out of the UK. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I have a fear that we are losing that strength and power coming out of the colleges. And you being there straight on, you know, uh, on ground with all the students. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you feel that could, you know, be improved? Or do you feel that the students aren't taking this seriously? Or do you see any future when you're in these colleges today with any of the students <clears throat> on the same there, level as someone like Kim Jones? There, there is, for sure. There is. There's definitely mm -hmm. promise. There's definitely hope. But I think an issue is that um, I think fashion has become so... It's opened up demographically so, so much. It's become so much more popular than before. It's um, kind of glorified as this like really glamorous... Um, exciting profession to have and I think what isn't spoken about so much is, is the, the realities of how how hard it is and how much work is involved so I think a lot of people get involved for the glitz for the fun for like for the joy for like shows models all of that but then they don't really know about the realities of actually running a business mm -hmm. and I think so a lot of people when they come to colleges like um, they don't necessarily know what type of designer they want to be. They don't necessarily know what they're trying to say yet. That's why they go to college, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think sometimes, yeah, because there's also such a, there's such an um, increase in intake as well that it's much harder to, it's, there's a, it's much harder to kind of funnel down to like the, to, to be obvious like these are like the, the obvious stars that are coming through because there's just so much going on, there's so many people around. But um, I guess, 
yeah, there is there is things that could change. There is things that could happen. But I think a problem is this is like this glorification of if you want to get into fashion and be a designer, then being a designer who runs a wholesale business and who shows on fashion, who shows a fashion week, that seems to be one of the only kind of pinups yeah. of how you can be. And really, it's like, well, to be that type of a designer, to be pulling out collections, new and exciting collections every six months, on top of that, to be able to run your production, deal with um, distribution, deal with stores. It's like really, you need like someone really crazy to, to be able to do that. I think you need someone who's obsessed, like really, really obsessed. And so, not just an artist, someone who has a business mind as well. Because actually des the reality of designing is probably only about 20% of your time is spent designing. Mm. The rest is like meetings, organization, finding factories, especially in the beginning when you don't have money to have a production manager and mm. you know, a PR and all of these things, you're doing it all by yourself. And a lot of people don't really, I think, take that into consideration. And that's fine. Like, it, not that that's fine, but like, not everybody wants to be that kind of, kind of designer. So I think we need to kind of like open up the doors to the possibilities of being a different type of, or being in the industry in a different kind of way rather than just being like a designer who who churns out all these collections. You know, there's other possibilities for you. I mean, um, these type of designers have big teams. Huge um, teams yeah. Unfortunately, you know, not everybody can afford a team. But when you are in college, I think that's the one time to understand um, the importance of having people around to support you. Mm. And there's so much help out there and so many people that are offering to help you as a student. I think also in education, they should be told or they should be offered a chance to say to them, this is not something you can do on your own. You know, you have someone like uh, Jonathan Anderson, J.W. Anderson, he's got an incredible career, but mm. he has a team. And he doesn't have a team that someone told him he had to have this person because they work on a magazine or that person because they're trendy. He went with a team that he knew would work best for him. And I think he's still with the same team today. It's hard to come by. Yeah, well, it's, hard. it's not hard if you open yourself and you realize that, okay, some people probably would say when they go to college, I want to be a designer because it's like being a rock star. Exactly. But a rock star even has a team yeah, whole, to hold it together. So team. I think um, <clears throat> they probably will need a lot more tough love than they've been getting. Yeah, yeah, by maybe. Telling some... them the truth about how this really works. Yeah, but I mean, if we go back to the education part, like the courses, most fashion courses are design courses. Right. So they're not fashion business courses. Mm. That's a different course. So in schools, you know, we're not teaching them about line sheets <coughs> and, and your production and factories and grading and the PR side of it, marketing. But why That's... aren't they? This, to me, is a, a very strange situation. If, if you're going to go in to go to a college and say, all right, I want to be a designer, they have to know there's 10 things they have to do before they can s honestly stop and say, oh, this is what I really am. Yeah. Like, they have to wake up. Like, yeah, I don't know if this... This is reality, you know? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure exactly how all the courses are kind of, like, constructed oh, right. and formed. Okay, right. You know, that's not really, that's not really <laughs> what I do. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I totally agree. There does need to be a, um, an emphasis on that because what happens is you leave school, you haven't learned any of these things that we're talking about. Um, you know how to design, you might know how to do some like line drawings maybe, but um, like I said, that's only a small fraction. Yeah. But that needs to be, that needs to be a you know, conversation with like educational boards. In... Yeah, this is why we're here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're Hopefully listening. Hopefully they're going to listen to everything we're saying. Yeah, exactly. Because it's almost like we're producing them to fail. And this is sad because we can't afford to go by every year and not churn out at least one global business coming mm. out of the UK. Mm. Like, how many seasons have we been? out here where we're giving out, you know, new, new Gen is an in incredible incubator. Yeah, incredible. So, so, so as much as Lulu Kennedy, yeah. the fashionese, you know, 100%. thank God they exist because without them, my God, I don't think we'd have anybody. But 
at the same time, there still has to be an extra added, you know, course to give into everyone because not everybody that goes to fashion college is going to be a successful designer. No. But they can still be on a design team. They can still be a part of the industry. They can still have an incredible career in fashion. But this, this is what I was saying. It's like we need to stop glorifying and using designers as this pin-up. Yeah. Because actually, you know, designers are one, one part of the team. What about the pattern cutters? Yeah, there what you go. What about the seamstresses? You know, like, maybe you're not a great designer, but you're actually a really good pattern cutter. To me, they're the new rock stars. They're... <laughs> like, no you design got a dope pattern cutter, pattern cutter could name their price. No design, yeah, exactly. No designer could do it without them. And, and the thing is, is like, actually, if you want to be involved in fashion, maybe you're not quite sure why. Maybe actually you're not a designer. Actually, you could be really, really involved by being a seamstress or a pattern cutter because you're basically like their, your designer's right hand. You're going to be, you're there at the fittings. You're talking about the designs. You're the person with the skills and, yeah. the, you know, the skills to be able to, bring those designs to reality, which a lot of designers can't buy themselves because they don't have the technical skills to mm. do that. But, and I guess on that point, maybe we need more seamstressing courses, more pattern cut cutting courses, and, and we need to kind of, sh kind of highlight those people in the team. Because yeah. I know for, for me, if, if I'd never met um, DeVille, who's, who I was working with, there's no way I would have been able to do all those things. I was really fortunate because she was really skilled in, in areas that I wasn't. See, there so you go. So we worked, we were like a couple almost, you know. Right. <laughs> but but this, you still get the same enjoyment. You still get the same fulfillment because yeah, I, like I've worked, I've worked in the past as an assistant designer. So I would come with extra ideas on top to actually enhance the, the, the idea that they would have. Not, and I don't want to, I've never really wanted to be labeled as a designer, but my God, I love being on the team. I mm. get the same thrill, I get the same excitement, and then I see the end result. You but know? also, you can go home and sleep at night, you know? <laughs> exactly, you without, like, le without half the stress. Without half the stress, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you know, I've, I've helped quite a few, I'm not gonna name names, because I think uh, egos have really gone to such a level right now that, um, if you say you help the designer, they feel that they're not the designer. They are the designer. Mm. But every designer has a team. Because we also need, in order to achieve, uh, I guess, a really strong business, we always will need another ear to say, well, hold on a minute. Did you think about X, Y, and Z as far as sales? As far as, you know, who you want to sell to? So, you know, what happened to the enjoyment of the team? It's like the team has gone out the window and the designer just wants to be someone that they could never, ever really be on their own. No, that's impossible. That, you, no? You, it's impossible, yeah, to be a one-man show, let's say, a one-person yeah. show. Like, that's, it's not going to happen. Um, I mean, it's weird. When I speak to Kim, he always, always appreciates his team. You, Kim is brilliant. You can't do it without the team. Without the team. He's yeah. the first to say, Karen, my team is amazing, you know. He shouts them out, you know, this is a beautiful thing. And everybody still wins, you still win. And you stay in the industry, you mm. know, it's you like- a, It's a paid job, yeah. It's a paid job. <laughs> it's a paid job, yeah. <laughs> it's a paid job. But so maybe, yeah, maybe we need to highlight these people more. Maybe we need to spotlight them more. Maybe we need to talk about them more because actually the, the industry does lack in the seamstresses and yeah. pattern cutters and all the production, production uh, management. I think it does lack, yeah. Mm. I mean, at the same time too, uh, designers that are the name of their own brand. Yes, they have the initial design idea, but if you have a pattern cutter that can design and that's the person that you're working with, you're gonna win 200% mm. because you have the backup yeah. of an idea and you have the streamlinedness of the idea and you know, what you can produce is going to be, like I say, 200%, more than 100% of, of, of what you have. But are we dealing now in a generation of new people coming up that can accept that it's not just all about them? I'm just I'm I mean, trying one, to find out because- One, one thing, one thing uh, 
It's tricky because in a way sometimes I feel students, young designers, almost set up to fail in really? many in many ways. Because Shame. it's quite it's quite how you know, when you think after you've gone to university, college, you know, foundation, BA, MA, you're probably in about fifty grand's worth of debt. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> probably. I mean it's probably more for some people, you know, mm. for housing, the course fees and whatnot. So then you're already in debt, you come out of college, you're expected to then create a collection on par with multi-million pounds companies, like companies who have hundreds of staff and hundreds of millions of pounds. And I think it's kind of, you're, this is what I mean, you're kind of setting them up to fail because how, how is that even possible? Right. Yes, you can create a collection and you can create something that's fantastic and looks fantastical and is going to grab attention and press but then can you produce it can you do, you know and then can you can you make money off of it maybe not that's a lot more difficult to develop a collection which is ready for production is a lot more difficult than just creating a collection to show so sometimes I do feel like it, even with the sponsorship schemes as well is you get a small amount of money you might get three thousand yeah. pounds five thousand yeah. pounds but the reality of like that's not even covering your model costs yeah, yeah. So where, so again, like, if you've come straight out of college, you have, you, you're trying to create this collection with no money because you've just come out of college, you get a little bit of funding, barely covers, barely covers a fraction, eating, of, a yeah. fraction of your cost. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to progress from that? You can't. The next, you know, you can't because you, you haven't developed the collection enough to make um, pieces that are sellable or manufacturable. So then you don't make any sales, and then you're left with no money. So, yeah, I'd said this before in show studio about, you know, some of the most incredibly talented um, kids that are coming out of the UK are not rich kids. Mm. And quite often, yes, quite I often. do agree. Quite I, often. Have them, yeah, and I do agree that, you know, how can we actually support them to develop? Because if they just get that little extra development, then we're going to see in an insane amount of new global stars. And I, when I say stars, I mean, I don't mean pop stars, I mean stars in, in understanding the business and showing that out of the UK, we still rule. In every single uh, uh, crew that's mm. worldwide, we're talking from Ralph Lauren to YSL to wherever we, we think of, Everyone in that studio is at least one or two people that came from the UK. Yeah. Hands down. Because the UK develops the creativity that has no fear. Mm. But at the same time, what happens when they get a job at that, at that place? Do they end up staying there? Or do they, are they able to come back to the UK and say, right, this is what we need to do. We spent a few seasons at a big house, we understand now what the business is about and how we can structure our business and the way we design into becoming a global brand. Um, hopefully they can, but they're not always pushed to do that. Either they leave London and get a job, but mm. they're never told they can come back now after a year or two of working somewhere else to say to themselves, right, I can, I can do this because that's what McQueen did. You know, he worked in so many different places. And then when he came out, came out hard, you yeah, know. With that knowledge, with that with experience. That there you go. So I think also, <clears throat> too, we have to push these kids not to think they have to be incredible immediately out of college. This is, this is it. It's like, but it, it goes back to the point of, like, stop glorifying uh, this idea of being a designer who's going to create a collection of, like, 30 looks, <clears throat> which equates to 100 pieces. Actually, if we, you know, that's a, it's a stress. Actually, if we maybe opened up the doors to be like, you know what, you don't have to run that type of business. Because I think the problem is, is always that it's like the business model of being a fashion designer, doing catwalks and, and doing wholesale is kind of what all the magazines kind of, they don't promote, but that's kind of what they spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's what the whole industry spotlight, spotlights really, when actually there's, a, there's like a whole world of designers out there in London who don't do that, who are really, really exciting, who show all 
who, who create all types of work and they have no interest in running a wholesale business like that, in mass producing pieces. Right. But does anybody talk about them? Do, do we... See? They don't want to. <laughs> it's a corporational thing. <laughs> we all understand that. You know, so... And we're both probably a little bit against so that. Then, <laughs> so, then maybe, so maybe then if, if, mm -hmm. if there was other opportunities, other possibilities to explore, maybe then designers wouldn't fail at the first, second, third hurdle. Yeah. Maybe um, there would be other opportunities for people to grow at their own pace. And maybe, yeah, we would have, a, I think, a healthier, more promising, promising um, landscape in the fashion industry. Because, I don't know, for me personally at the moment, it's, we've come out of the whole sportswear world. The last yeah. decade has been like all about sportswear. Yeah, the luxe sports. Thing, luxe yeah. sportswear. And we're, so we're slowly coming out of that. Um, and there it doesn't, there it doesn't, seem to be too much exciting. Tell me about it. There, there isn't, you know. If so I see one more Atlanta sport pretending to be fashion collection, I am going to throw up. <laughs> but like, I think it's, it's enough now. I think it's, it, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult. It's really, really difficult to create exciting, relevant collections every six months and to do all of that. It's really, really too much. Like, in a way, the, the, the industry is set up for the big boys Really, that's how yeah. I feel it is, you know? It's yeah. like, how, how, can you, how can we show on par with like a Burberry or, or a, in London, I'm talking, you know? Or how can you show on par with like, a, <coughs> I mean, forget London, like let's go, let's go internationally, like with any of those big teams, those big labels, they have so much money, so, such huge teams that they can do anything they want. And we're expecting young designers to kind of compete on par. It's like, it's just, we need to stop that. Not to say that the young designers don't have the talent, because they do. They've got the talent, but... It, and we were talking but, about one in particular that could, that could do a fierce smackdown to a lot of the big brands. Mr. Paolo Casano. Let's, let's pa keep yeah. it 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's keep it together. Paolo's got a whole lot going for him, like a whole, whole lot. And if you look at the Other World collection, mm. that would wipe the floor of Paris Fashion Week. We have so many designers at Paris Fashion Week. But we need it to be London Fashion Week. See, this is where I'm coming from. We have to make it so you have to come to London mm. in order to get these fits. You have to come to London in order to see the talent. You have to come here. So we have to reevaluate what London is again as far as Fashion Week, as far as what we're bringing out here and what we have to offer. Mm. And... Paolo, you can't mess with Paolo. I mean, look at this. He doesn't look, care. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> look at this. I mean, you can. And he's brilliant as far as pattern making, as yeah. far as image making. He's, he's one, I feel, how can I say he has all the potential? Yeah, he's, he has. At the same time, maybe also it would be good for him to have a job, one or two. Mm. Just to see what's going on, to see how it works, and not to let him feel inadequate. If he doesn't do a big show, he could still do a collection. Well, he, you know? he ha yeah, he yeah. has been. And I mean, look at these. These are just... This specific collection he made all by himself, by himself. all cut by himself, all of its hands look dyed by himself, and all constructed by himself. And it was made during lockdown, actually, this collection, mm. when he was um, at home in Wales. This is the kind of thing, and this is the kind of collection, and this is the kind of designer that can bring people back to London. This is what we have to start producing again. And I feel that it's just so much have gone to the, like, pseudo-sport DIY thing opposed to proper design and showing what London the UK has as their own aesthetic. Mm. Remember when I first came here years ago, I went to this place called Hyper Hyper because I read about it in ID. And it allowed young designers to feel their way around, <clears> to <throat> see what will sell, to see what won't sell, and to, it's like, it was like another incubator. Mm. I almost wish that New Gen had a shop like that. I and that Lulu had a shop like that. Like, they were given a space by the government I've, to showcase yeah. these people. Well, okay, so 
But I know we're going to go into that conversation because yeah, I know, know you've done something like that already. You know, yeah. So, you know, I opened... Because, <laughs> yeah, for, the, for these reasons, like, I opened Fantastic Twiles four years ago now. Fantastic Twiles, right. Fantastic Twiles, Where yeah. is it located? We're nomadic. We're all over. It started off in my studio in Forest Gate. I, Forest Gate, like, how cool. I dedicated a, a space in the studio for the shop. Um, mm -hmm. And we're all over the place now. You know, we've, we've, we've done a drop here at Show Studio. Oh, um, did you? Oh, yeah. crazy. We, you know, we've been in squats in South London, in photo mm -hmm. studios, other people's, our friend's warehouse in Hackney Wick. And It'd be good we, if someone um, can give you a space, though. Just say. I would love us to have a space. Yeah. You know, I know there's... I know there's there's space out there. But, you know, we, we sell Paolo, and he's, oh. he sold, he's selling lots of pieces. Like, the last job we've done, he's, he sold thousands of pounds worth of goods. See? People See? are there for it. People want it. And, and we all do. This is, and this is what I was talking about, like, going back to what I was talking about. We need other opportunities for people to do things. So the reason why it started was because I'd left, I'd stopped doing um, all the wholesale business, and... I realise that there's so many, so many designers around me who don't do that kind of work. Right. So why not open a space to see them? Because I used to hear about Hyper Hyper. I used Hyper to hear... Hyper was the one. And, the, and these, these places are, like, romanticised by the industry. And we, they talk and you like, they sound so incredible. You're like, wow, what was no, happening? No, no, no. You walk in who and you see in there? every designer. Like, I bought my first Pam Hogg outfit there, my first Rachel Auburn outfit there. Oh, God, there were so many. Like, some of them aren't existing today, but I got so much stuff there that every time I went back to New York, people would just take the yeah. plane just to shop at Hyper Hyper because they weren't <clears throat> interested in selling to the, 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 um, the big shops in New York. They so didn't care. why don't we have a shop here then? Because, you know, I, I, confront, you know what I'm I, I confronted a, um, a member of staff from the British fashion and I said, why don't you have a shop? Why don't you have a shop to sell these designers so that we can... Maybe it's something that you can organize. And with, with that saying, you can, you can become a, the person that curates it and that um, gets the kids in when they are on New Gen and when they are in Fashion East, as well as what you're doing because you're helping so many people. Mm. And this could be a way that brings people back to London because they have to come. Mm. They have to come here. It's not sold in Paris. It's not sold in Italy. It's not sold in New York. Let's see how strong it is. Because back then, it worked. It, it still works. It still, still works. works. Like we're, personally, like we're so busy. We're so, see? so busy when we open. And there's a mm -hmm. vibe because all the designers are there. See? All the customers are coming for a specific time. There's like an actual vibe and a buzz. Like you see like the looks, mm. the, those looks. Exactly. The, way the people that come in with like so many weird looks, like that's exciting, and that's what encourages like mm. people to buy it, and that's what encourages style. Because that's another thing. It's like we've got fashion, but then we've got yeah. sti style. Style. There fashion you go. And style are different. <laughs> like you know, um, mm. you could wear fashion with no style whatsoever. You know. <laughs> Unfortunately, for most. Unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> so. Mm. So so that it that it's it could happen. It could happen. But I guess. I mean, one, was, this whole conversation I had it was really annoying because what, what it boiled down to was it was a conflict of intre interests. So it, it was a conflict with buyers because if you're inviting people to come to London to buy mm. um, this, well, this is more buyers, but if you're inviting them all to, um, and stores in London as well, yeah. to buy British designers, then if you've got one store which is selling all of them, that's a conflict. But really... Not really because it's an incubator. So what it does, it allows the designer to see what can work mm. commercially and what they make very small amounts of. So it allows them to see the business side without the stress, you know, yeah. and also yeah. without trying to be who they think they should be immediately and then fall to the wayside and crash and burn. Mm. That takes away the crash and burn. Well, the, the, but the emphasis should be on like trying to... Um trying to get designers to a space where they're independent, really, where they're, yeah, not, where they're not dependent on only sales coming through buyers and stores. There you go. Where, actually, you don't have to wait six months to produce something to sell. You don't have to wait for loads of factories to make it. Actually, you can... Mm -hmm. And this goes back to, again, it's like... 
the idea of running a wholesale business, it's so, so huge. Yeah, of course. It's so, so huge. Yeah. And not all of us can manage that. Not a lot, most people can't. Most people can't, no. <laughs> Whereas, actually, the industry could be thriving and be really, really exciting with new work coming out constantly. Yeah, yeah. If it was on a smaller scale and if we had an independent outlet for that, which is like a store where you can be like, do you know what? I made this incredible jacket last night. Maybe it'll sell. Let's see how it goes. I was possessed. If something happened, I got possessed and I made this incredible jacket and I now want to sell it. I don't want to wait five months to then work out how I can mass produce it and find the fabrics. I just want to sell it. I've made it. It's a one-off. It's exciting. You know, it's like... Yeah, I mean, that that to me is the whole vibe and the buzz of London anyway, isn't it? It's like, oh my God, I just did this and I didn't even know what I was doing, but yeah. oh my God, it's everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I can make it again, but that's okay. Yeah, even better. But, even better, yeah. But for those diehard fashion fans who, like, yeah. who are looking for those one-off pieces, who are looking mm. for those obscure things, I think it's become even harder for them to go shopping. Because course, yeah. you, when you go to a lot of boutiques, it's like, oh, I've already seen that online at this other store. Or you go into another store and it's like, I've seen that there as well. Mm. It's like, where do you go to find that weird, exciting yeah, stuff? Sure. Yeah. And, and also, it's like, if there isn't an outlet for it, then it doesn't encourage people to create in that way. Right. You know, so again, if we're... And we can't stop that because that's what keeps London on top. Yeah, but that's what keeps designers <laughs> excited as well. It's like, mm. I, you know, I personally, I don't want to have to think, how do I... Um, I come up with an idea and then you're like, oh God, now I've got to find fabric for it, but then the supplies only do 100 meters and now I've got to find a What's specific zip and now I've got, to, and the prices, and once it goes to stores, it's multiplied by two to three and it's like, these shorts are now like 400 pounds instead of, I would have sold them for 100, 150, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. like, it, it, they're just, I guess this needs to be alternatives and mm. we're lacking alternatives for design, ways for designers to, to exist. Yeah. And you can't expect young designers to, 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 because it is churning out, it's every six months, you can't expect them to create something really exciting all the time like that. So really we need, we need alternatives, um, we need platforms which give the possibility and, and opportunities for people to explore mm -hmm. create, creatively with what you make or mm -hmm. with your pricing or finish or, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of things really. Like, I feel like in a way sometimes there shouldn't be any rules like yeah. if, if you you know if you don't know how to do a zip who cares put a button in it or <laughs> <laughs> make the waist elasticated like if you if you don't know how to do a perfect seam like sometimes it's like who cares like yeah 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 I don't, yeah i don't want a perfect seam because you don't want a perfect seam there you go <laughs> it's just going to look like it's come out from like a supermarket <laughs> for me you know like it, if all this, if everything's always perfect and exactly how it should be, like well, sometimes, well, then you lose the whole idea of design, don't you? Sometimes yeah. I find that really like debilitating, yeah. um, and in a way, like the and you as a designer, yes, you understand it much more than I would. Yeah. You just want to make, and you just want it to flow. And I think, I guess this this just brings me to the point of like, you know, where are where are we in the industry now, and what what is going on? Like, what does it look like? And unfortunately, it's really grim. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not, it's not trying to be, I'm not trying to be rude or I don't think I'm bitter or mm. too jaded yet. But um, it's grim out there. It's not exciting. Like when I see runway shows, unless we're talking about like the big players, you know, like the Ricks, where you're just like, wow, look at this, like, you know, yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, unless we're like, unless we're talking about a very few select, it's, what I see a lot on the runway is high street clothing now. Really, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's glorified high street clothing. Glorified high street clothing. <laughs> or, or expensive high street clothing, mm -hmm. because it's become, it, everything's become so much more expensive. So to do really exciting things, or garments which take ages to develop and... Uh, um, it's also because a lot of the really talented people don't get that chance to do something where people can see it. I think this mm. whole idea of a new hyper-hyper, which is what you're doing, it allows also buyers, this is what I said before in Show Studio, how um, young designers should be allowed to do collections for a while before they're accept, expected to sell them as big collections. If they can do collections and sell a few pieces at the shop, <clears throat> this allows them to continue. Mm. At the same time, buyers can come to London to check these spaces out, to see what is moving mm -hmm. and what the possibilities are and possibly help these designers 
you know, like there's, there's definitely shops out there that say, oh, well, we will pay you up front 30% or 40% mm. if you produce this for us. Mm. They will be more in line to do that if they go to a place that you're doing and they can go and actually see the collections actually moving and selling. Then there's some sort of positive idea it's like reassuring. of yeah it's just like it's at least it's a positive energy that says okay maybe i can do it and if i can't maybe two people can get together and do collections but we have to start doing some sort of community hmm. that supports the talented people that don't have money yeah and these are the people that will put the uk back on top because hmm. right now it's fluctuating and it's moving the talent is here. How do we organize it? You know. You know something else that the industry could really do with is I think before, like when you when you read and watch, you know, interviews and documentaries and that, you, McQueen had a lot of backers, like uh, personal backers, in, yeah. individuals, like philanthropists, um, donors. Like, where have all these people gone? Because there's so many like rich, rich, rich people out there who used to invest into the arts and to the fashion. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, where are they? Because... Well, they're probably like, <laughs> scared. Where are they? Because there's a lot... Well, what, we, what we're seeing is everybody's a designer when they're not. So well, it's this difficult. Is a, this is another thing that's like giving yeah, Everybody's props, designing, give, they're not. But yeah, another thing is like yeah, giving... You know, there's a lot of people who yeah. are kind of getting put up there and you're yeah, like... And they shouldn't have. No. Really? Um, this whole thing of the awards, and I'm not against the awards because I'm there in it. But um, <laughs> I'm all in, all in it, all inside of it. All up. I just think that, you know, people shouldn't be given awards because they're popular. They should be given awards because they're good. Not because of tokenism and Not, like oh, clickbait. Oh yeah, there's a lot of tokenism going on. Unfortunately, yes, there is. There always will be. But if we can push that towards the most talented, I think we, we, can, we can become, you know, more excited about a positive result. Uh, it's, it's difficult because who's to say is great and who isn't? Mm. What I'd like to, to hear is another voice like uh, Louise who uh, everyone said was, you know, so hardcore. Miss Wilson, Louise yes, Wilson. Yes, there's only one. Yeah. And um, at least when she said something, it, it, it mattered and it worked. And she predicted the best that we have today. I don't know if uh, in the colleges people are allowed to say the reality to any of these designers. <laughs> when I say it, it's like they, they, they want to jump off the roof. You know, it's just, this is, this is, a whole nother situation that has to change. Mm. It's not that people aren't good at what they do, it's just that they need to be better well, in order to, we need to stop compete and exist in the global market. Mm. And stop pretend, like stop giving false hopes. Yeah. There's, a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of false hope giving, there's a lot of um, setting people up to lose actually. <laughs> yeah, there's, hello, yeah, there is a lot of that. Um, Oh, we gave them a chance. We kind of knew they weren't going to make it. No, you didn't give them a chance because you didn't tell them the truth. Oh, yeah, that's it. You didn't give them. If you told them the truth, they'd make it. Yeah. You know? And this is a sad thing because if we're not careful, are we going to have an award ceremony that has credibility and that has um, a statement that, oh. that shows that the achievement coming out of the UK fashion colleges is real and lasts a very long time, not just seasonal. Oh yeah, three years, they're gone. Because they couldn't keep it up, you know? Am I making sense? No, totally, but the, the problem is, is like the, the, there needs to be a whole reshuffle. There really needs to be a whole re rethink of how, how the sponsorship schemes work, how much money you actually give people, how long it goes for. At the same time though, sometimes I feel like there's a bit too much molly coddling. There's a oh, bit there too is, yeah. much like... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, it looks like you can't say um, the truth to anyone. You, it's really difficult. You have to sugarcoat and tiptoe around the truth in case, no. in case you upset certain people and then there's complaints made and whatnot. Where realistically, it's just a business. Sometimes I'm just like, you need to treat them mean to. No, it's not about treating mean either. It's just telling the truth. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's not mean. Mm -hmm. It's the last I'm saying. It's just being truth. honest. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the honesty is even a bit too much for people to take. 
a lot of the time, especially nowadays. Um, well, then they fail and they fall to the wayside and they don't exist in two years. We're well, not, yeah, we're yeah. not, that's the problem. We're that's not the producing. That's the result. We're lying. That's the result of lying and mollycoddling and, oh, and being all like fragile around people. That is the result. Um, it's just quite sad. I mean, things have to change. You know, my, my, my thing is tell the truth, uh, give them more time to, to develop who they are, to know who they are. It takes a minute. Sometimes it takes two years. But it's that thing of like, how, how, how do you take that time when you've got no money? So you need to be, so like we said, you know how you do it? You need outlets. You make things that can sell in the shop. Outlets. That, you know, you get a job like everybody else does. Um, I've all, I, through my whole 20s and 30s and even 40s, I had three jobs. Mm. I don't understand any other way of living. Mm. <laughs> you know, I took care of my mom. My, my move to London, always had three jobs. I don't understand anyone, is anyone better than me? No, so if you wanna be in this business and you wanna get your life, you gotta work for it. Mm -hmm. You get that second job, you, you, know, you learn more about pattern making so you don't have to spend so much money. Exactly, you know? yeah. you, you do the work, you know, that's why you could not come for Lee McQueen. He did the work. Of course he had a huge team, but he did the work. But he could have done it part of, he could have done loads of that by himself. Oh, he did yeah. do loads of it. He did do loads of it, exactly. You know, when you read the books and you're like, oh, I, and this, I always love this, you, you, like you read and it's like, oh, we'd come, we'd, we'd leave at night and we'd come in in the morning, it'd be free dresses ready, all stitched up on mannequins. Oh, yeah. Because he'd been up all night just like. When I worked with, I worked with um, Andre like, Walker wow. for years. <laughs> it was the same. I'd be in Paris and we'd go in at 10 a.m. and we'd leave at 4 a.m. Because he changed his mind about an outfit or changed his mind about a sleeve and needed the time to look at it and disappear and come back two hours later and then come up with another idea. Isn't that the joy of being in this industry? Yeah. It's not about being in front of the camera saying I'm at a dinner but or this, I'm, I'm next is. to someone else. Look how cute I am. I'm, I, I, I'm an influencer now. I'm, I'm beautiful. I'm cool. I'm popular. Who cares if the dress isn't hot? Well, that you know, who that cares last, if that, the outfit isn't working? That lasts for a couple of seasons and that's it. <laughs> that's it. But, the, but another thing is as well, it's like, what have you got to say? So many, I find, and this is what I, when I look at the runways, it's like, what are, what are these collections saying even? It's just like clothes. Yeah. But it's not, it, it hasn't come from an artistic mm. vision. It has, there isn't like a direction. It's not like you're trying to, you're not, suggest, you're not suggesting a new, um, a new idea of styling. A mm. new, you're not suggesting a new proportion. It's just a lot of clothes you could find on the high street. Yeah, you can, yeah. It's like, unfortunate, yeah. So that's not gonna last, is it? Because no. it's what you have to ask, I think you have to ask yourself is like, what are you offering to the, to the, to the, to the, to the world of fashion? Like, what, yeah. what do you have to offer? What are you saying? Is it just something else that's like kind of like what somebody else is already doing? Because I feel like there's a lot that is very similar to each other. It's almost I, like... I remember I was judging um, once for New Gen and two people came in with the exact same thing that Richard Quinn had on the catwalk. And when I told them we already have Richard Quinn, they got upset. But I'm, I'm not here to, to say a lie to them and I don't care if they're upset. What I care about is telling the truth. You have something. If you're looking at Richard Quinn, that means you've got something in you that has, has good taste. But honey, we already have him. So Why are you doing this again? isn't good enough. Yeah. You know, and I think the truth really needs to be said. At the same time, support for the kids that don't have the money needs to be sorted out. Yeah. Because, you know, the BFC can give you but so much. They get but so much but we have to come up with plan B, because if we don't, we're not going to even have Paolo existing. Mm. And that's scary. Yeah, it is, it is scary. And I guess on that, on that point, like, we need to, we need to um, help those kids without, with not, a lot of money, with not a lot of money, what we've got to also realize is that a lot of the students who do come through and who do then go on to create collections come from really wealthy backgrounds. They do. Extremely wealthy backgrounds where their parents are buying them studios, their parents are paying kind of bankrolling it really. Wow. And 
as spectators, you don't know that. You don't know if that student's poor, rich, from, from royalty. You know, you don't know, you haven't got a clue. Um, and it's misle it can be misleading. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. it can be misleading. And not just say that because they've got money, they're going to go on forever, but they can get past those initial hurdles, which are almost impossible for most people to yeah, get Yeah, but past. are they a stronger designer? Will they not really always. last? Not always, no. I'm not knocking everyone, and I know that we know quite a few that are very wealthy, that are successful in Paris. Doesn't mean that they're not great. Some of them are still great, hmm. but the really insane ones, they don't have any money. Uh -uh. And this is something that we have to see what we can do. Because look, well, look what happens when you do support, you know, look, look at McQueen, look yeah. Craig Green. Another one, yeah. You know, he, yeah. he doesn't come from loads of money. I think Paolo could be another one, like working class background. These people, they are the ones who just like, wow. Yeah. They're the ones who wow you. Yeah. yeah. And they're the ones that are here. <laughs> yeah. And they're the ones that are global. So, a question is like, do we, rather than... Um, is this a shady it's not. It's, it's not, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> it's not, it's like, sometimes I think, you know, I do believe in equal opportunities. I feel like we need to, you need, it needs to be, funds need to be, um, distributed equally sometimes, but then sometimes I'm like, clearly this person is tons better than these three people they are also sponsoring. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we just give it all to this person? Yeah. <laughs> and gonna, keep it moving. Who's gonna yeah. create so much more noise and have yeah. so much more of a lasting impact on the industry mm. and the progressive, and be progressive with that funding, much more than maybe these two, two or three combined yeah. So actually, maybe. I hate to say it, yes, I can agree with that. So maybe, this is what I mean, I think like the whole system needs um, re evaluating, really. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, sometimes I think, sometimes I keep saying molly coddled, but sometimes I feel like there's just sometimes a bit too much help as well, you know? Yeah. Because in a way, it's like when you keep. Yeah, tell me you about You keep it, helping yeah. people. The wrong as well. person. <laughs> yeah. Well, just in general, people get used to it. And people just like, oh, well, I'll wait till I get funding or I'll wait till someone comes along and like whisks me off my feet and like gives me loads of money or pays That's for this. That's not reality. Like, That's not it's reality. It's not reality. Like really, whether you've got money or not, you should be killing it. You'll be able to kill it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whether you've got fabric or not, you should be able to pick up some scraps off the floor and make something incredible. Like it's, if you've got what it takes, there you, you go. Yeah. These are the ones that we have so, to pull out of the bag. Mm. Yeah. And, and, but sometimes I feel in a way it's like, all of that comforting and this like cushioning and protecting is a bit too much. Chuck them in the water, let's see what happens. There you go. Because if you can swim, you're going to swim. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? You're going to swim. You're not going to let yourself drown. Yeah, but exactly. if you know that someone's going to come along and throw you a, a lifeline you know, every time you're chucked in, you're not going to bother swimming anymore. Mm. You're going to wait yeah, for that lifeline. It doesn't make you any stronger as a designer either, because that means you don't have to do the work. Um, yeah, I just think you're right. There is a lot of, uh, also a lot of awards given to kids that shouldn't be getting any awards whatsoever. Because it's, what it does, it, it, just, like it, just, it just year. shows sometimes I think that the UK is, is uh, ticking boxes opposed to really understanding what this business needs. It needs a strong, strong backup. Mm. But a backup for the ones that are really talented. Mm. not just popular. You know, on this point though, you know, with the awards and all these like schemes and then um, platforms for sponsorship, it's, if, cause we don't, you know, it's very rare you get a McQueen come through or, you know, like a, a Craig or a Paolo. I think it's really, really rare that they come through. They don't come through every year. No. But every year there's awards and every year there's the sponsorships. So, Maybe instead of, you know, I just think maybe instead of always having those things, maybe skip it. You know, if there isn't a, if there isn't a standout designer of the year, don't give don't the give award. Don't give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> don't exactly, give it, don't yeah. give the award until yeah. someone is is due that is like respectfully due that award. But yeah. the problem is, is that 
it's an industry and it's a machine. So yeah. if, if, there isn't, if there isn't a new designer coming through who's going to get that money, then maybe that organisation also isn't going to get the government money. Fair enough. And the Fair same enough. with the awards. If, if they're just trying to do the right thing. You know, of course they are. The right of thing. course they are. They, of, they all want there to be amazing people. But we've got to... And maybe in the past there was much more... You know, I remember when I was coming up in the industry, it was buzzing. The industry was buzzing. Like we had oh, a men's yeah. week, we had a women's week. There was loads of designers it actually was. on men's week. Mm. Men's week was packed. It was crazy. Um, so maybe then it justified having these awards and schemes every every season. But <coughs> when it's not coming through, maybe we shouldn't actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is a whole. Because then they lose their 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 you know their their backing. But this but, but that's the problem you see. So it's like yeah. and again it's like. Maybe that money goes to someone who really could use, use, utilize it, who is really that talented, that can become global. Yeah, but sometimes, what, I guess what I'm getting at is sometimes I feel like designers are used as bait. Okay. They're used as bait and they're used as props because, you know, if there wasn't designers, we wouldn't have the fashion awards, which is now turned into this, like, Hollywood ball with glitz and glamour and, like, red carpets, like... It's as if, as if you're walking no, up to the, to the Colosseum <laughs> and, like, you know, the TV... No, no, but you still have to do that because we're living in a world of superficialists. We have to show that London is prosperous, that London's doing well. We are, and if, I hear you. If. I hear you, but at least if we're going to align those awards, align the awards with the majors. Ah, exactly, yeah. It's, yeah let's have them, all of that if there's the talent, but if there, there isn't... The real the talent. talent. Yeah, the it's real this, talent. It's like we're... we're but then we're like projecting this fallacy of like, or yeah. just, yeah. when actually that's not what, you know, it's not there. We're just pretending that we've got all these amazing designers and we're pretending these are amazing collections when, I mean, obviously it's subjective, but you know, they're not, it's not. Mm. So what, what is the result of that? Because if we keep doing that, then the end result is a dead industry. Yeah, yeah. We've, yeah. we've, we've shows that people don't want to come to. Yeah, there you With go. Collections yeah. that people don't want to buy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, we're not going to go down that road. <laughs> we're going to try and see if there's a positive, you know, result to this conversation. For me, the positive result I can give is to tell the truth. When judging um, what designers can represent the UK, we should do it a lot stronger with a more <clears throat> fine-tooth comb. Yes. And to give the credit where the credit is due and the money to the kids that can really do the job. Yeah. I think if we really concentrate on that and raise that bar a lot higher, then we can pretty much go back to where you, the place we were, which was we were on top. Mm -hmm. We were literally on top. And the red carpet, forget it. There wouldn't be enough room <laughs> <laughs> for the amount of talent that will be walking on that red carpet for the Fashion Awards. I mean, that's my take on this, definitely. Mm.